about the spiritual lessons I've learned from intermittent fasting. So this weight loss journey has been really interesting. It's been different uh, from anything I'd ever tried. You know, when I was growing up, always having trouble with my weight. I would go on various diets and always had trouble with my weight. And so when I finally found intermittent fasting, it was very different. And, and one of the surprising things uh, that came from all this was, was the spiritual side of weight loss and the spiritual side of, of even weight gain um, and the things I learned surrounding that. And it's interesting to me because I grew up a Christian. You know, I, I went to church when I was a kid. I, I always thought of myself as a Christian. Um, and, and I never really felt like I left that at any point. But I think like anybody else, I've had times where spiritually I felt like I was in a really good place and then other times where I didn't. But I never really thought of that as being ever connected to my weight. I kind of thought my spiritual life fits over here and then my weight is this other little thing. And it was really only in that I've had enough moment when I was at my lowest point where I started to kind of see that perhaps uh, the two were connected somehow. You know, the whole reason I was so upset was because, you know, I saw that, you know, my weight was at a point where I didn't even recognize myself. And, and in that moment, I was thinking these terrible thoughts, like my family would be better off without me. And, and, and those thoughts shook me up. And, and I thought, you know, this is, this is bad. <laughs> this is, and I, I cried out to God and I, I prayed and I, I just asked for help. And in that moment, you know, I did feel kind of this sense of, peace come over me, but it took me many more months before I even heard of intermittent fasting. I, I, in a way, I felt like I was still stuck uh, with the whole weight loss thing. Um, yeah, sure. I prayed to God and yeah, it, like I think he heard my prayer because it did feel better, but I was still searching. And when I found this thing called intermittent fasting, I still separated the two. I thought, well, yeah, I mean, this is, sounds like a really good way to lose weight. And I didn't really connect it to this might have anything to do uh, with me spiritually. But it was only after starting to practice intermittent fasting that I could start to learn some things uh, that helped me. You know, it helped me in my spiritual life, which helped me on the weight loss journey. And of course, it's really interesting to me that fasting, well, at least in the churches I had grown up in, they didn't really talk about fasting. It was kind of like, oh, this thing that people used to do way back when, but it's just not a thing now, not, not a normal practice. Although I've learned since then that there are churches that, that, that still practice this. It was just that in my area where I grew up, there was a lot of Southern Baptists and, and that was just not a thing that was practiced, or at least not in the churches that I was familiar with. And at the same time, I knew these things. I mean, I was reading my Bible. I, I knew that uh, Jesus talked about fasting. He fasted himself. And I knew things like you know, traditionally, gluttony has been considered one of the seven deadly sins. And yet I still had this disconnect, like my weight has nothing to do with my spiritual life. In my head, I kind of thought God doesn't care what I weigh. And I think that is true. In one respect, you know, God's going to love you no matter what. And, and his love surpasses anything that you're doing right now. I do believe that. But on the other hand, the Bible does talk about, you know, gluttony being a sin. Proverbs 23, 19 through 21 says, Hear thou, my son, and be wise, and guide thine heart in the way. Be not among wine-bibbers, among riotous eaters of flesh. For the drunkard and the glutton shall come to poverty, and drowsiness shall clothe a man with rags. And Matthew 6, 25 says, Therefore I say to you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat, or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? And the interesting thing about fasting is that it can give you clarity and it can really take away distraction from your life. For me, you know, when, when I started to consistently practice intermittent fasting, I started to see how much of a distraction food had become in my life. And, and so by fasting, it, it gave me some clarity. It helped me to see things in my life better. And the first big lesson I learned was that food had really become my idol. You know, food was the thing I turned to whenever I was upset, whenever I was bored or stressed or, or, or whatever, I would just turn to it. I wasn't praying. You know, I was just like, let me go get a snack. You know, I, I'm stressed about money. Let's eat some food. And this is not good. I've always heard an idol being defined as anything that gets between you and God, anything that you're putting above God. And I do feel like I 
was in that place. Unfortunately, I was blind to it. If you had asked me, do you have any idols in your life? I would say, no, 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 I don't. Like God's number one. But my actions were really telling a different story. And so over time, I started to see that I really need to put food back into its rightful place. And fasting created the time to do that because, you know, instead of going to get a snack and, and just worrying about stuff, I had the opportunity where I could, you know, pray. Uh, although, or sometimes it was just an action that I needed to take. And I, I do believe that God expects us to take action in our lives. He doesn't expect us to just sit there and say, Lord, you handle this. Oh, you know, I'm not going to, I'm not going to do anything, but you handle it. Like, I think that we really are required to take action. And so the fasting taught me that I had the time to do that. And I also learned the lesson, you know, yes, food is comforting. And I, and I do believe that God gave us comforting foods. I mean, if, if you think about the most natural substance there is, the most natural food is breast milk and it's sweet and it's warm and babies love it, you know, and, and they're comforted by it. And, and so, yes, food is soothing and it, and it can help your hurt feelings, but at the same time, that can be taken too far. Uh, just like with any other gift from God, I think it, there are certain ways that you can use them, but they can be taken and, and abused. And, and I believe that that's where I, my relationship was with, with food. I was using it for comfort too much. I was making it way too important. I also realized that I was guilty of gluttony. And again, had you asked me, you know, before I started losing weight, are you a glutton? I would say, no, you know, in fact, I probably eat less than most people. I mean, I was really convinced of this, but it was again, only through fasting. I think because fasting just made me more self-aware. Like I was able to just watch myself more. And when I was doing that, I started to see, oh, wow. A lot of times when I get up from the table, I am miserably full. Like I'm, I'm way over full. So why, why am I doing this? Like I, I am sitting down and I am eating to the point of being uncomfortable. Why do I do that? And over time, as I started to get really consistent with fasting and I was losing weight, I started to see by comparing, you know, how much food am I eating now versus how much food did I eat back then? I thought, wow, I really used to eat a lot of food. I mean, I, I was, I was being gluttonous. And in general, I realized I just lacked self-control. I really had gotten to a point where I felt like with my weight, you know, like it's not my fault. Uh, you know, I eat when I'm hungry and I'm gaining weight, I'm obese, you know, and I, I was just kind of in this mode of, I had thrown my hands up in the air as if I had no control over this, you know, it's just, I, I'm a victim. And, uh, but really, what it was, was I was not practicing self-control and that was the problem. And what I had to kind of remind myself was, I think I had kind of forgotten that, you know, I'm not just an animal. I mean, yes, I have a flesh body, but that's not all there is to me. I have a soul, I have a spirit and, um, and those things I can, I can use that power, uh, and the power from God to subject my flesh and make it behave. And fasting, I think, is just a really great way to learn self-control. Uh, I was thinking about, you know, all the different things that I've been able to improve on since learning how to fast. And, and I think the reason why fasting is so great is that it's a concrete thing that you can do. And it's very clear if you're doing the thing or not. You know, if you say, I'm going to fast between these hours, it's very clear at the end of that, that period of time, whether you did the thing you said you were gonna do or you didn't. Uh, whereas it's, I think, more difficult if you're, if you're trying to gain like self-control over, say like your um, worry or, uh, you know, gossiping or, you know, not getting angry as quickly. Like those are squishier, but fasting is a really concrete thing. And yet by learning how to be consistent with that and practice it in that way, it spills over into these other areas because you've learned self-control in one area and now you can get self-control in all these other areas. And so like that self-awareness, I started to see like, wow, I actually am being pretty lazy. I'm, I'm sedentary. I'm, I'm not moving very much. I'm sitting a lot. I had gotten just kind of lazy about, uh, you know, I would make my kids go get me stuff instead of me getting up and going and, you know, picking up the remote. I'd say, oh, can you know, hand me the remote or hand me that or go get my drink or, or whatever it was. And 
when it came down to it, it was just because I was being slothful. It wasn't because I couldn't do it. And again, in hindsight, I started to see because I had this fasting window that I was being consistent with, you know, I had this habit before of procrastinating on tasks. Like I would have a thing I needed to do, but instead of doing that, I would go get a snack. Oh, I need to eat a snack before I start on this. And I was not doing the work I was needing to do. Uh, and that's, you know, sloth. <laughs> so I, I was slothful, which again, big surprise because I always felt like I'm a very hard worker. And in some sense, I always was a hard worker, but I had this slothful kind of streak. And fasting also showed me that I had a quick temper, you know, like I would be in the fasting window and I would, you know, find myself standing in front of the pantry and I would think, why am I here? And I would realize like, I'm really angry right now. And normally what I do is I, you know, um, grab a snack. And, and why was I angry? Usually it was because my temper had flared because my kids misbehaved. I mean, there, there was always some sort of like thing that happened and then my temper flared. So what do I do? Instead of just like exploding on people, I would go eat. And so I had to learn okay, maybe I've got to get, you know, because again, when you, when you, when you are constantly like that anger is just flipping on so quickly, you feel like you want to do something with that. And so instead I had to realize like, okay, um, I need to get my temper under control. So what are some ways to do that? One, one thing I found for myself was that actually one reason why my temper uh, tended to flare was because I felt like I was being interrupted, which is generally because I was on my phone. I was staring at my smartphone and then my kid would be misbehaving and it would get to such a point that, you know, I would snap at them, you know, and, you know, and that would be anger or, you know, like, or I would snap and then feel guilty. So there's like this anger and guilt thing that was happening. And again, I would normally turn to food for that. But since I wasn't doing that, fasting taught me like, okay, you got to work on this thing. So that's what I did. And Look, I mean, I want to make it clear that I still struggle with all of these things. I still sometimes am gluttonous. I still sometimes am slothful. I still, uh, you know, have times where my anger flares, like, but it's just gotten so much better and I've become so much more self-aware of it, which is half the battle, I think. And fasting has taught me patience, which has also helped with the, the whole anger thing, because, you know, when you have to tell yourself, no, like, no, we're going to wait, it just instills more patience in you. And I've found that over time, you know, things that used to set me off don't set me off anymore because again, I think I'm just a more patient person. And the last lesson I learned was I had a lot of stuff I needed to forgive. Um, I would have, again, you know, I would not have thought that spiritually there were things I needed to get in order on the weight loss journey. But when I would sit down and I would be, you know, thinking about the food I was about to eat, I started to see like so many times I was thinking about, you know, people who had made fun of me or a, a situation, an, a really embarrassing situation that happened to me in middle school or, you know, uh, something more recently that had happened, like a, a comment about my weight or something. And there were people I just needed to forgive. You know, that's really important in Christianity is to forgive people. And, you know, again, I was kind of blind to that. So I decided to forgive stuff. Like just as soon as I would think of it, I would just say, okay, I'm over it. I, I forgive that person. I hope they're doing well. And the, the hardest thing to do was to forgive myself, to really learn to forgive myself and all my past mistakes and all the mistakes I continue to make and just to receive God's forgiveness for all that. It's been a tough lesson to learn. But again, I think it's been so important because going back to, you know, why, why would I turn to food? So many times it was like guilt or just negative feelings. I'm trying to make myself feel better. So what do I do? I grab the food. So intermittent fasting gave me that boundary that said, okay, we're not doing that right now. We've got to deal with it in other ways. So that's been my experience with how intermittent fasting has helped me uh, in my spiritual life. And so I hope that that's helpful for you. Again, you know, I don't want to make it seem like I have it all figured out or, or like I'm now super Christian or something. I'm not, you know, I'm just somebody who messes up a lot and God forgives me. So I would encourage you to explore this, you know, take some time to pray uh, for your weight loss journey. I mean, I, I think that it's important to always pray about everything in your life. And, and I think God wants to be a part of all of it. So I hope that this video was helpful. I hope that, you know, if right now you're maybe having trouble on the weight loss journey, you could start to kind of explore the spiritual side of it and see if perhaps there's some stuff there uh, that maybe needs some attention. So thanks for joining me in this video and I'll see you in the next one.